in 1969, uh, there was a snowstorm in Wilkes-Barre. And it was right after Christmas and uh, everything was shut down. Rail stations, airports, roads. And down the road came a, an elderly man carrying a suitcase to our motel. Uh, my mother was at the desk at the time and uh, she's a very talkative, engaging sort of person. So when the person came in to, the, uh, to register, he took his coat off and he was a priest, um, had a collar on. And my mother said, you know, my son was interested in becoming a priest. He slaps her on the side and says, call him over here. We lived in a mobile home on the property. So I trunched through all the snow, came to the, uh, to the desk and he looked at me and said, ah, so you want to be a Franciscan, huh? Uh, uh, yeah. Give me the phone. I said, true. Give me, and he called Pulaski, Wisconsin. This is the day after Christmas. In the office was the provincial with the vocation director. I mean, this is a God thing. And it was just a few days later, I flew out to Wisconsin. And, and I have to say, when it came out, I felt at home. It, it, I can't explain it any other way than I felt like I belonged. My first assignment after ordination was to Saginaw, Michigan. I was part of a team ministry. Um, I, I'm very committed to working as a team. To me, that's a really a, a critical piece of this whole thing. Um, for four years, we did four priests, one parish, over 2,000 families, with a school of about 500. Seven sisters, but religious sisters. It was like Camelot. Everything we did worked. Um, but I, I had a deep love for our retreat center in Burlington. And so after my four years, I asked to go back to Burlington. Um, and for 11 years, I was uh, involved in retreat ministry. A uh, lot of high school retreats, a lot of late nights, uh, but it was such a blessed time. It was while I was in, in Pulaski that um, our provincial asked me to consider being part of the discernment for somebody to work in initial formation and the division. There were six of us around the table and, and I went on a, on a whim. I really did. I wasn't expecting any change in my life. And all of a sudden, during this experience with a facilitator, um, it became evident that the group was asking me uh, to be part of the division. I, that was a very humbling experience. For nine years, I did novitiate ministry. That was probably my, my most, that touched me the most because every time we had a new group of novices, I did my novitiate all over again. It was the most spiritually fulfilling nine years. Um, I, I just, they weren't easy, but they were spiritually fulfilling for me. Uh, after those nine years, uh, I, and, and I ended up at a parish in Cedar Lake, Indiana. And then we had a chapter and my life changed again because uh, our provincial asked me to be provincial secretary <coughs> to move up to Wisconsin. So I left Indiana with the novitiate and with the parish. And so that's what I've been doing uh, uh, since uh, I came up here in, in 2017. I'm, I'm an extrovert, so I talk, I think, with my mouth. So <laughs> don't, don't expect that what I say at first is ultimately where I'm gonna land. I, I need to do that. That's how I process uh, externally. Um, so when we were in the novitiate, for example, or in the parish, I would always say to people, don't hold me to what I've just said. Let's talk more about it. And I'll tell you when I finally arrived at uh, at least I think where I'm, where I'm feel we need to be, or the idea needs to sit. So that's some of who I am. Um, <laughs> I enjoy pol to do the polka. I go to Pulaski. In fact, I was here there this year. They have Pulaski polka days, and I I, I enjoy dancing. I, I enjoy that very much. When I was in the parish, uh, I was on the bowling league. Now, having said that, if I broke a hundred, I was happy. <laughs> But it was fun, 
and we were with a lot of young adults um, at the bowling alley. We did it every other Sunday from uh, September to April. Uh, and it, I, I don't think I ever missed. I, it was just one of those moments where this is me time. Uh, so those are some of the, the kind of the pieces that uh, might give you some indication for you. We're talking a great deal about renewal, and I think that's where we're going to land. Uh, and we have to we have to enter into this renewal with with an, a different perspective. We have to see it differently. We can't do business as usual, or we can't dust off what we've always done and presume it's going to make uh, things better. We, we we need to be creative. Um, as a council, we need to be creative, but we also need to be creative in the way that we interact with the friars. Um, and, and engage them um, in, in this process because unless we renew our life, we will not have vocations. I'm convinced of that. It's, we don't have people coming to us because there's something that doesn't seem to be uh, luring them in. Much in my, vo my, my own vocational story, when I came to Burlington that right after Christmas, I felt at home. And, and you, you can't program that kind of thing. It, it's the kind of thing that you just know when it's there. And I think that's some of what I'm hoping that we can kind of unearth in the friars. They, they have all that we need. We just need to kind of discover it again, uh, engage them in the process. Uh, and I think that that can be an amazing experience. Not always easy. Uh, and and at least our hope as a council is that they'll trust us enough to be able to let us in there and uh, help dig to find what's really there. I would hope the public sees us as caring for each other. I think that's one of the ways that we can renew our life, that we care for each other, we're honest with each other, uh, that we don't exclude anybody. In this day and age, there are so many there are so many people who are experiencing division. Some of it's political, some of it's the church, but the hope is that we can be bridge builders in this process, bringing people together.